Hey friends, Mr. Fox here. The rain finally stopped, so I stepped outside for a few minutes to get some fresh air, and instead I managed to catch the sun in the corner of my eyes. And now I just see a whole bunch of spots. If this has ever happened to you, then you've seen what we call an after image. Let's take a look how it works. All you're gonna need are your own eyes. Even though we can see them by staring at bright lights, we are not going to stare at the sun. For one thing, staring is rude. But also, that could really damage your vision. And we don't want to do that. So instead, I want you to take a look at this image of a fox in a red lab coat. Oh no, not this guy. Wait, that coat isn't red. In fact, it's the opposite of red. And that's very important for this activity. For this to work properly, you need to continue to stare at the center of your screen. Do not move those eyes. As you stare, the light from your screen is going into your eyes. You might see a lot of blue and green and black in this image. Keep staring for a few more seconds, and then we'll switch to an all-white background. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. You might have seen a faint image of an orange fox in a red lab coat on the white background. I like this one. That is because of the way the light was affecting millions of tiny things in the back of your eyeballs. Let's take a look at how your eyes work. When light enters your eye, it projects onto a thin layer of tissue at the back called the retina. And the retina is made of two different types of cells, rod cells, cone cells. Humans have about 92 million rod cells, and those are the ones that help you in low light situations and perceiving movement. We also have six million cone cells, and those are the ones that help you see color and find detail. When light hits either of these types of cells, a chemical reaction occurs that creates an electrical signal for your brain. Basically, the retina converts that light into electrical impulses that your brain then uses to produce an image, kind of like your eyes and brain are doing right now. However, the longer you stare at something, the more these cells start to adapt to that light. If you close your eyes or look away, the sensitive cells that were not adapting will take in new information, while the desensitized ones that had adapted will not. This will leave you with an after image. Now, this can happen pretty quickly with bright lights, especially if you accidentally look at, like, you know, the sun. But it also happens with color, just like you saw with the fox. When we stared at that inverted image, this one with the opposite colors, we were letting our cones, or those color sensors, adapt to the light coming from our screens. We have three different types of cones. Ones for short wavelengths of light, ones for medium wavelengths, and then ones for long wavelengths. For this experiment, we'll just refer to them as blue, green, and red. The cones that see blues and greens were adapting to the light, and if you're staring right now, it's happening again. Ready? Three, two, one. And there's the after image again. The reason that you see the inverted colors has to do with the white background and white light in general. Things appear white to us because we are seeing a balance of all the colors of visible light. When we stared at the blue-green image of the fox, we were causing those blue and green sensing cones to become less sensitive. Upon switching to the white background, our brains were getting a stronger signal from the cones that see oranges and reds. Instead of seeing all white, our cones sent the brain exactly what they could see, the after image of an orange and red fox. Now, luckily, it shouldn't last that long, and your cones will be functioning properly in no time. Now, if you want to try this again, you don't have to use the image of the fox. Why don't you try making your own? Grab some crayons, some markers, a blank piece of paper. See what you can come up with. Remember though, don't stare at any bright lights. You wouldn't want to damage those rods and cones. Everyone, have a great day. Thanks for joining me for Spark of Science at Home.